Uh, today's video, we're going to be doing some shop improvements and efficiencies. I'm going through the shop and I'm actually going to head over to the shipping department where we know that our efficiency level is slightly too high in the labor department. Basically, we've done an analysis on our operation. We are almost two times higher on the labor. Approximately 30% of our expense is labor and in a manufacturing facility, it should be 15 to 20. We're going to 3D print some tools. We're going to make some improvements and we're going to come up with ideas for repetitive motions. So one of them being we're tightening and loosening a vise to hold parts hundreds of times a day. How can we automate this? How can we get this to actuate through a foot pedal where we can use four of our extremities to do a job? rather than using the same one over and over again. It takes a lot of time, so we're gonna go over, I've done a couple of parts already that I could. I knew I could design quickly um, and 3D print quickly, and I'll show you how those work. And I have about five other things that we're gonna do. We have one thing that's just finishing the print, and we're gonna go see how it works, because I have never tried it. See it there okay so when we are assembling the jam nuts onto all of our heim joints sometimes the threads have either a burr or something in the way or it's just a bit tight at the start more often than not it's just something from the machine process that makes it hard initially and then easy the rest of the way so it's a bit hard to hold a socket or a nut with your bare hands all this is is just a I mean, I measured my own hand, which this is probably a bit too big for some, but it had to fit the hex of the nut. So basically, we're just going to put the nut in there, start the heim joint. We have a, an end on a drill that turns the heim joint and blasts it into here. So you'll just be able to hold on to it a lot easier. Whoa! This is the Kyle Bain Lube Shop, doing a quick oil change. All right, we got tool number two. Stick them up. Now, these things don't take very long. I'd say in the rain, we need to make a four times scaled up Mega Mantis knuckle for the front foyer. Oh, made out of like... <laughs> Aluminum. Yeah. Yeah. How sick would that be? Just a huge... Just a big... Make it into like foot. a chair that you sit what in. A chair, yeah. Yeah, I could see it. Yeah. That would be pretty funny. This was more... So you might not even use this one, but basically... These are the two that we've done so far. This one has already been put to use. Finished last night at five, have it running. One of the benefits to making a 3D printed socket, which I didn't actually think of until after making the socket, is that the nickel plating can get quite damaged from the steel sockets. Because of its plastic nature, it doesn't scratch or mar any of the parts, which is really nice because uh, I didn't think of that. And now that I'm thinking of it, it's a great idea. We just put a 3 8 drive on the end of it. We're actually going to remake this one already half an inch longer to accept our longer Heim joints, but the reason I made this one was because the first tool that we had, this is able to spin. This fan is. <laughs> so basically, it can spin any joint, and then we have a three quarter here. So this is kind of like one universal end. And then we were going to do basically, this is what you would be holding the whole time you're assembling. And the main reason is because it's kind of ergonomical and it gives you good grip in case the thread, like I was saying, has a bit of resistance. Normally a bit of resistance is fine. It's probably a burr from the machine process, like I said, but you can hold this and it's not gonna slip through your hands. So use it, don't use it. It's a tool, it's here. We're just gonna keep on making some parts. Um, but one of the bigger projects that I have going is that Doug uses that vise hundreds of times a day. All of these parts behind you all need to be held in a way that uh, is different because of their odd shape and design. So what I want to create is a dual cylinder slider that has basically, if you guys know what a pipe clamp is, it's basically a clamp that you can release and slide. And once you unrelease it, it's locked in that position. And then you can clamp any width part from there. So I want to create a tool, a dual slide sliding pipe clamp, but one that has one inch actuated cylinders on it that will clamp a one inch section that's actuated by a foot pedal. 
So basically Doug will be able to take an arm. There will be two beams here that slide open and closed. Doug will be able to take an arm, put it in there, hit the foot pedal, let it go, and it'll be pinched in place. The idea is that the center of this vise is open because we some of the arms are really long. Yeah, so this needs to be threaded here. Because of how many welds are around this bung, it oftentimes ruins the threads. When you re-thread it, it's almost like you're cutting new threads half the time. To clamp it in a vise is extremely I awkward. But then the top handle I have doesn't take a 7 8 top, so I have to do is a socket with a ratchet. So I'm all the way up here. What we need is something that can clamp this bucket, as well as an arm, as well as a knuckle. So if he simulating what I just said. He would put this here and he would hit the foot pedal and this would simply close, clamp, and then he could do whatever he needs here. This is an awkward arm that Doug spends a lot of time on. So if we can ergonomically improve that as well as add a robo tap arm, which would eliminate what he just said, which is using a socket and a ratchet to rethread this, we could probably eliminate, you know, seven to 10 minutes on one operation as well as make it easier for Doug as well as make it easier for anyone else to use the key to those two things what I just said the robo arm and the clamp is uh, obviously a safety factor obviously you're gonna have a 600 pounds of force which is what I calculated with the cylinders I can show you in the computer you can't get your fingers in there that's gonna be a problem we also can't have steel on steel so we'll have to create like a Delrin pad or a 3d printed plastic pad that could be replaceable so that we're not marring up this and we're not creating like a shear point that would literally cut a finger off or do some serious damage. So incorporating a safety factor is gonna be priority number one, but then the efficiency plan is what we are here to solve. I'll show you some things on the computer and that's pretty much it um, until we order in some parts and get some things to actually start building some stuff. What you guys were just watching I can play the timeline here and it kind of shows you how the part would have been created. So another thing I would be interested in knowing is if you guys would want to ever have any sort of lessons on the actual design criteria and how to make like a parametric model and where to draw and how to draw and how to create everything. Like one simple point that people do is they put fillets and, and radiuses inside of sketches not realizing that it's much more controllable and better to do that all with the create and modify commands. If I look at the sketch, you can see everything is fully constrained and adjustable. So it doesn't matter what dimension I change, it's going to grow and expand and do what I want without glitching out. These are all like really simple things that we do on a regular basis, but when you first start designing, these are details that you will absolutely miss. Even going to school and learning this stuff, I still have learned a ton, even as of like a couple weeks ago, on how to do something better. Good example here is this needed to be longer for the uh, longer heim joints that we have, so it currently receives all of the jam nut sizes that we make. And to make that adjustment, I just edited the feature. I can go 3.5 inches long instead and it'll actually adapt everything and everything is constrained in a way that I can make it longer without disrupting any other geometry. This is another cool product we didn't really talk about, but this is essentially going to be a powder coating cap. And I'll go to a section analysis where you can see the blue here is the E36, E46 spindle. And then this piece here is gonna be a 3D printed cap, this yellow part. Basically, it's gonna engage with only one thread, and we're gonna 3D print this with the thread so that when I put this cap over the spindle, I'll do a half turn, and this is actually gonna protect the spindle while the knuckle is being powder coated. Currently, we're taping the spindles, and when you tape the spindle, it gets powder on the tape. The tape gets half melted, especially if it's closer to the elements or the hotter parts of the oven. Then when you go to take it off, the tape tears and it's hard and it takes time and it's a waste of material. So when we were doing an analysis on everything, we were like, well, how can we make uh, something that you can't buy, but improve efficiency, save material, and ultimately give the customer a better product. So this is gonna give you a perfectly taped line uh, just after this seal. And it's gonna work really well and it'll be powder coated right up to where the bearing basically is gonna sit. 
So we're gonna make these caps for everything. We haven't even tested this one yet. I just did this yesterday. So moving on to the next thing, you guys probably don't know, but for the uh, development process, we have access to McMaster car. So I'm looking up methods of clamping that are really quickly and easily adjustable for multiple different sizes of widths, but then I want a one inch clamping section. So what I mean is I'm gonna use something like this pipe clamp. So this foot is gonna be mounted probably to the table. The bar is gonna have the air cylinder here. Probably connect these two locking plates together through like a pivoting cam under the table so that when Doug pushes a handle, it'll disengage both so that he can slide this out freely and kind of lock it in place so we can insert any component from McMaster car here on Fusion. And when I get in here, I can just simply type in like air cylinder. Once I get into this section, obviously there's hundreds and actually thousands of options. So we're gonna select the parameters that I want through the search filtering section. And basically what I ended up with was this uh, 304 pounds of pressure. It's a two inch bore. I can basically build the entire clamp within the computer. These are all easily replaceable, easily purchased. This is a foot pedal that's gonna actuate the cylinder. So we're gonna get that on the ground. As you can see, the prices are pretty reasonable. So, and I can download all of these files and bring them all into here. So on the next episode, essentially, we will be building this clamp. Welding components, making plates, 3D printing pads, and then making a clamping system that works for us that you can not buy. If you could buy it, it would be worth thousands. That's just a little look inside of what we're doing for the efficiency side of things. And we kind of do stuff like this all the time, but it's never planned and it's never like structured. We just solve problems as we need to solve them, but we're kind of focusing a little bit more on it now because we realize the labor is so high. So if you guys find this interesting at all, we will dive more into it because this is something that can apply to everyone. I actually made a 3D printed part for my house the other day. Uh, so you can apply it literally anywhere. So see you guys in the next video.